I'm Kaylee, and this is my reading update for the 30 Books in 30 Days Readathon. This past week of reading went really well. I got a little bit behind, and then I caught up, and then I got a little bit behind again. But I've been enjoying my reading quite a lot. Before we dive into everything I've been reading, I'm going to reach back here to our BookTuber shout-out book, and we'll shout out somebody randomly. Today's shout out goes to Melina Reads. I will leave a link in the description to their channel, so be sure to go over and subscribe to them. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if you've been enjoying your reading lately. And follow me over on Instagram and Goodreads and Storygraph and all the places. As part of the Shaketember Readathon, I've been reading through some Shakespearean plays. And I reread Julius Caesar and really enjoyed it. I'm going to do an entirely separate video because I have just too many things to say about Julius Caesar. <laughs> so you'll see a separate video about this play coming out sometime this week, maybe on Tuesday. So be on the lookout for that video. And I'm also going to do a separate video for The Pale Horse by Agatha Christie. This is, I think, the fourth or fifth book in the Ariadne Oliver series. Ariadne Oliver is not very prominent in this series, but she is the one that has the flash of brilliance that solves the mystery. So I really enjoyed this one, and I'll be doing another separate video with all my thoughts about The Pale Horse. One of the books from my Wrapped Books reading challenge was King of the Wind, the story of the Godolphin Arabian. This is the fictionalized story of a real horse who is known as like the father of the thoroughbred horse breed. So this book takes real events that we know about where this horse came from and then how he came to Europe and how he finally ended up in England. And then it kind of sets a fictional story around those events. Mostly it follows a stable boy named Agba. Agba is charged to take care of the new foal that has just been born when its mother has died. And Agba feeds the foal with camel's milk. He names the little horse Sham. And when Sham is grown, then the Sultan sends him to the French court to be a gift for King Henry the 15th. And Agba is sent along to take care of the horse. But when they arrive, Sham is half starved and he's very worn from the journey. And so the court doesn't like recognize what a wonderful horse he is. And they send him to just be a plain cart horse. Eventually Sham is bought by a new owner and sent to England with Agba sticking closely to his side through all of their adventures. It's no wonder that this book won the Newbery Medal. It is very thoughtfully beautiful written. I just loved all the adventures that Agba and Sham share together. It's really sweet to see how horse and boy, they understand each other without words. They stick close together through thick and thin, and it's absolutely adorable. The plot moves along really quickly from Morocco to France to England, and we meet a lot of diverse characters along the way, some of them very kind and generous, and some of them selfish and cruel. I really loved the thoughtful writing style. It just brings forth the depth of Agba's character in a really lovely way. I gave this five stars. Wonderful. And I reread The Tales of Beetle the Bard, but in Spanish. I always enjoy reading this one because, first of all, I just love fairy tales. And the commentary from Dumbledore is absolutely hilarious and very clever. It's just really lovely to dive into the world of Harry Potter and get kind of these ancient legends from his world. And rereading the book in Spanish was a lot of fun. It kind of just gave me a fresh enjoyment of all the stories and the magic. The next few books in this video are books that I received from a publisher in exchange for a free and honest review. I read Crimson Twill, Witch in the Country. So I had already read the first book, Crimson Twill, Witch in the City, and enjoyed it very much and asked the publisher, Candlewick Press, to send me the second book in the series. Crimson is just different from other witches. She doesn't want to wear black. She wants to wear polka dots. <laughs> she doesn't want to wear a pointy hat. She wants to wear a hat with a bow. And when Crimson invites her city friends to visit her in the country, she has a whole list of activities for them to enjoy together. But everything seems to go wrong, and Crimson is very worried that her friends are just going to have a terrible time. Crimson is so sweet. I just love that she is not afraid to be different. And her friends really appreciate that about her. They like 
her differences because they also have ways where they are unconventional or different in some way. This book made me laugh. I just love the hilarious writing style. And it was interesting to find out more about this world of witches. Because they're in the country, we get to see how they harvest magical materials to make brooms and things like that and potions and stuff. Really cute, and I gave it four stars. Then I read the graphic novel, Family Time. The O'Connell family are vacationing in Ireland when they magically travel back in time and they have to defeat a local tyrant. The children, Lily and Tyler, are excited to explore the past, but their parents uh, just think that it's like a really good historical reenactment. <laughs> They befriend a timid young man named Rory who helps them to break out of a dungeon. And Lily develops magical powers from being splashed with a magic potion, but she doesn't know how to use her powers. This graphic novel was okay. It's just not particularly good. The dialogue doesn't flow very well. It feels kind of awkward. And the plot is fine. It was, it was kind of fun adventures and stuff, but it, I don't know. It's just sort of lackluster. And also the art style is okay, but not great. What I really don't understand is the cover of this graphic novel. This character is not in the book. That does not look like any of the characters in the book. There are no wolves in this story. So why is there a wolf on the cover? They do mention a couple times that O'Connell means descendant of wolves, but there's no other mention of wolves anywhere in the story. Certainly not enough for it to be on the cover. And the art style on the cover is nothing like the art style in the book. Like, I hate it when the cover doesn't match what's inside. This would have been a better cover because you saw how, like, when I was talking about the characters, I had to turn around to the back to show, look, here's the actual characters in the story. This is not a character in the story, so I just don't know what is going on with this cover. I gave this two stars, so it's fine, but not wonderful or anything. The book that I was supposed to have finished yesterday, which I'm still working on today, is The Giant Rat of Sumatra. So this one was one of the wrapped books challenge. I've been enjoying it very much. It looks like it's just full of mystery and intrigue and pirates. There's a 12 year old cabin boy named Shipwreck. So he hasn't told me the pirates his name. His name is just, shipwreck because they saved him from a shipwreck and he's kind of just going along with the pirates for now until he can get up some money or something and try to escape and make it back home so it's like he's sort of loyal to the pirates he doesn't wish them ill or anything i mean they saved his life but also he wants to get away from them <laughs> i've been enjoying it a lot i'm excited to read the rest of this this afternoon and then today's book is the pinchers and the diamond heist so I need to finish this one and then dive into this one. Lots of reading in front of me today. Now this one has a sticker that warns you there are criminal activities inside. <laughs> this one looks like it will be a quick read. I'm sure that I can read this with no problem later on today. And then I will be all caught up and ready to dive in with more books for the rest of the week. Leave me a comment and let me know how has your reading been going for this past week. And of course, be on the lookout for my video reviews of The Pale Horse by Agatha Christie and Julius Caesar. So those videos will be coming soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world. Mm -hmm.